Okay, Dana, I just want to tell you quickly, uh, for the people listening, that before you hear Kyle, he does mention Bud Friedman. A lot of us do. Bud Friedman is a huge mm-hmm. influence. Yeah. He owns the improv, if you don't know, New York, L.A., uh, and he passed away uh, since we did Kyle a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. So I just want to say quickly, Bud was, you know, I could over talk about it under. I'll just say he was a huge, huge reason. He was like the first Lorne. I think, Danny, you said that. It was a guy that, mm-hmm. you know, if you get in at the improv, Mitzi was at the comedy store. She didn't like me. Bud liked me, got me up. And I had a great run doing all these clubs, working in the LA one. I worked the LA one last week. So a huge thank you and uh, a, a sad day uh, about that. But Bud was was a great, great, and he's great for comedians. I would just say, you know, the same thing like Lauren, Bud loved comedians, yeah. loved us. And he was very nice to me. I couldn't get out of the comedy store either which was sort of a scary, weird place back then. Mm -hmm. And Bud was friendly. He was old-fashioned in a way. Uh, As as people know, he had a monocle. He had some sort of weird cadence of talking. I don't know where it came from, but take it outside. How are you? Outside. But he gave me great spots, and he was very encouraging. And he was somebody, he passed away at 90. He looked 60 when he was 40, but when he was 80, he still looked 60. (laughs) I mean, he... He didn't age for decades. I would see him from time to time. I go, man, he looks exactly the Hello, same. Hello, Dana. Stay out Hello. of the aisles. Stay out Hello. of the aisles. He was like this yeah, with, the, with the monocle and that cadence. He's like this gentleman, yeah, and <clears throat> just a sense of decorum of like now we're starting the show. Everybody ready? Yeah, and uh, you know you don't a see a lot man. of monocles anymore. I feel like he might be the last guy. Well, I was there when he had you know regular glasses. Really. And, yeah, comedian got mad. It was drunk and punched him. He goes, "It doesn't matter. I'll just use this pot." And that's how the mo- I made that up. And no, you I go, don't know "Bud, you never got it fixed." He goes, oh. <laughs> "Yeah, the monocle was only Colonel Clink in Hogan's Heroes going back to the 1960s. He had a monocle, and then Bud. Yeah, but there's no one. No one does a monocle. You know, my f- what is my friend is a comedian in Arizona. Uh, Mike Sterner says his <laughs> his friend is. Japanese optometrist and every December 7th he attacks the Pearl Vision Center. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's not my joke, but I liked it. Hey. <laughs> I like anything where it's just, so, it's just such a joke. Nowhere. That's a yeah. good joke. Okay, but Bud, Bud uh, we'll Friedman, let you listen. God but man, you. Bud was great. Yeah. Laughed at everybody. A comedian. Created an amazing legacy that continues to this day with improv uh, comedy clubs all over. Yeah, great, great guy, great laugher. And uh, anyway, enjoy our podcast. Okay, Dana, before I get to mm-hmm. Kyle Dunnigan, I have to tell you, I have to get a plug in. What? <laughs> I get, I bought this at the gas station. And I used to like this. It says <laughs> mild, right? So I use it. Twice I've been tricked. This is an anti-commercial. <laughs> no, because it's so goddamn spicy. Mm. And what, if there's mild and there's medium and there's hot. Which mm-hmm. one do you think wouldn't be spicy? Mild. And even when I get it, everyone's like, you're the biggest pussy. Why do you have mild? I go, because I just wanted like the idea of it. I don't really want to burn up. And oh mm-hmm. my God, I was, my burrito, I was ripping it apart going, what in here? I'm blaming the burrito is so hot. It's that. <laughs> and I look at the back, it says, you know, jalapeno. I see the word jalapeno. That's all I need to see. That's all I need to see. I go. Why Why would it be so hot? And this isn't your fault, Dana. You have a lot of free time. But I was so head. mad last night, and then I <laughs> called Heather and I yelled at her about it. Um, but she Cholula agreed. Cholula is the best that's mild. Cholula I'll has to be I'll get you a bottle on the next podcast. No, it can't be anything. It just has to be red food coloring. Well, how it. about ketchup? Old-fashioned, yeah, that's, okay. that's basically it. If, give get me some, ketchup with three pieces Heinz of an onion in, in it. in that mix, all right? Kyle Dunnigan is one of my really good buddies. Kiel, Don, Kiel Dunnigan. And Kiel. he's a sweetheart. And we uh, we talked to him because we're talking to more comedians because when I'm out with these comics, especially ones I like, and they're heavily influenced by SNL, they grew up on it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they love Dana. They like all the people we've been talking to, and they share their stories with me. And some had auditions. Kyle had a big audition for SNL. The seminal audition in 2008, was which Bobby one. Moynihan was at, and Nick Kroll, yep, and, and Kyle. His story others. about his audition process. At the time, 
being a brilliant comedian and impressionist, a natural for SNL. And what happens is very dramatic, but he's he's organically very, very funny throughout this this talk. And, and some so, of these talks with these people are just straight up just laughs. You know, we're just talking about SNL. We're talking about yeah. he does impressions, he mixes them, and Dana does them. Mm -hmm. And that, those are the kind, just different type of shows. And that that's what this type of show is. So it's, it's you know, again, just a, a human story about someone trying to get on SNL and what happens. So it's it's kind of riveting, actually. And then like the before, during, and after, like yeah, when you don't get it, what it's like. And uh, we don't have a lot of those because everyone has it. Everyone got it. Yeah, and he landed on his feed. He has a huge YouTube channel. Yeah, with so All hysterical. this massive, hysterical, bizarre content. Instagram. So, uh, and he's just a fun guy to have dinner with. Yeah, 100%. Here is Kyle Dunnigan. How's Dana's dump going? Dana was right here. <laughs> huh? Dana was right here, and then he just took off. Da Dana, we're almost done. Damn, I, I brought a gigantic sombrero, but I left it. Do you need a hat? No, I don't. It's just for when we do our things. Oh, right. We have Chuck Barris, you're too young. Gong Chuck. Yeah. Oh, no, I know Chuck Barris, yeah. He would randomly come out with hats and not refer to them. It was, it was I did like that. Oh, break. really? So I was doing that. I saw you in a hat, like a round circle yeah, and farmer funny. hat. And I, I was yeah. like, I need that because the sun's really bad. And then I got one. A fucking pineapple picker hat. I can yeah. either spend hours with greasy uh, sunscreen all over, or I can put a giant hat on. Yeah. I prefer the giant hat. Some people go, no, fuck the hat. I'm going to grease it up for hours. I do both. Kyle That's Dunnigan is our I guest today. I dermatologist. That's because of the way you look. I went, you know, I went to a dermatologist, and they looked at a, a thing, and it was... <laughs> yeah. Because I thought this looks not great. Are we recording? Oh. Yeah, li light it up. Light it so, up. So let me. Because I, I have a dermatologist, dermatologist story. So what? Yeah, happened? I, I think I actually focus the podcast on dermatology. Well, it's what, good when it's about it's something. It's a good niche. Specific. Well, what happened? I, we can so, always cut this. I, <laughs> which means won't. means we won't cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, go ahead. Well, I, I just looked at like a little mole spot, yeah. and yeah. I was like, that doesn't look good. I went, and the guy looked at it. And he's like, you're fine. And then this girl came to visit me for like a weekend. I think I told you, David, about mm. this. And it mm -hmm. did not work out. Like yeah. she walked into my well, house. I knew that was coming. But yeah. <laughs> she Aww. walked into my house. No, he always, that's how they always end. <laughs> I had, uh, yeah, it always ends like that. I had this uh, house and uh, she walks up. She goes, do planes always fly over your house? She immediately just had all these well, awful things her. about my house. <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed the planes like. But I'm, now you I'm hear in him. the path. Now I, it's constant. There's just planes around. Anyway, she goes, I don't like the look of that mole. And I was like, I checked it out. I think it's okay. Chew it off, bitch. She's like, yeah. I don't think it's dangerous. I just don't like the look of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just a vanity <laughs> thing. Yeah. So I went, but I went back and a different dermatologist was like, that's a problem and cut it out. And it had like, damn, it got caught. It was... If it wasn't for the her, girl was the, the point problem. Of the story. Oh, I thought he said cut the girl out of your life. Well, I was naked yeah, on both. a slab, <laughs> and this guy's going around with the eyeglass. He's like ninety or something. Yeah, and he's going around, and he, everything he sees, because I'm covered in stuff. He goes age, <laughs> age related, <laughs> and a woman's writing it down. Age related, <laughs> age related. Yeah, I swear to God, for a half hour. Age. Oh. Should you do anything? Nope. Age related. Sick. Um, that's like Billy Bob Thorne, age related. He goes, mm -hmm. he goes. Oh, this doesn't out. look like much, but you might have to remove it. I go, my wiener, and then he took that monocle off. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my my wiener is the, age the, related. The greatest ch childlike reference to actually, a dick. Actually, Dana, tell him when you went to the masseuse what she said. Oh, I had this masseuse once, and she'd really start digging, and she'd go, she'd say, give it, give it, give it, yeah. give it, give it. Oh, didn't she go yeah. by your wiener and go, you hungry? No, that oh, was me. That was you. <laughs> yeah, no, I went. <laughs> Irish to... comedians for a hundred. Yeah. Is Dunnigan Irish or British? It's Irish. <laughs> Irish. I eat her. Yeah, so, so we I, have the same. I went to it. This is like a longer story, but a Tony Robbins wanted me to perform at his birthday party. I had. Yeah. Oh, go ahead and tell the story because why not? All right, this why is not? a great okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> do so you do I, Tony Robbins? No, I okay. don't. But I tried to get one for the thing. Mm -hmm. But I was excited because, like, I like Tony Robbins. I like, read like three books yeah. in my life. Two Awaken of them, like, Tony the, Robbins. Yeah, yeah, me too. So I was excited. And I was nervous because they were paying me more money than I've ever been paid for anything in my life. Seven hundred fifty dollars. No, higher. I turned them down. No, I know you got. You I got won't a big say what it is, that. but it was more than no, a thousand. I know. Tony <laughs> does not. 
Tony. It was twenty four thousand dollars more than a thousand. But what do you net? <laughs> it was twenty five thousand dollars. That's great. Yeah. It's that's that's wonderful. Well, yeah. So I was very. <laughs> that's excited. an adorable number. <laughs> I know to you guys that's no, so no, money. No, we don't get it. He says money bags here. Think yeah. about where you are and think of who owns this place. No, I know. Now, Cooling this house is twenty five thousand dollars. All right, Tony Robbins tried to beat you up. Got okay, you in so a headlock. We'll, we'll let you get through the story. Hopefully, we probably won't. I was nervous and I thought, hey, Tony would say, "Take care of your, you know, take care of yourself, little buddy." People don't know Tony. He's like nine feet tall. Yeah, he has actually a tumor on his pituitary gland, and it's pumping out um, growth hormones. That's why he's so big. When right, he's, he's, younger, he's growing a, a foot and a half in the Jesus. last eighteen months. Yeah, he's been. Yeah. I mean, when he was a kid, they asked if he wanted to take it out, and he was like, "No, I want to be enormous." Like he could have taken it out, and he didn't. Oh, wow. is that true? That's a true story. That, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he is I a huge be man. Enormous. <laughs> I want to be. Enormous. It worked. <laughs> it did, yeah. He <laughs> it really worked. stands out. Yeah. He'll like, put, I don't know if you see the documentary, but he puts his hand on someone's head. It's like a giant catcher's mitt just envelops the whole guy's head. Yeah. All right. I'm getting to the. Because um, you, you're a bunch story. of fucking losers. I don't yeah. care. I like hey, the whole you story. You little piece of shit. Yeah. He's a therapist that swears. Yeah. He yells. He's scared. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm getting comfortable. So I was like, I'm going to go take care of myself and, and get a m- massage. I never do that. So I went to this place and I don't want a hand job. I, I know about You're the You're not one of those thing. happy ending. Yeah. yeah. David's never heard of those. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the the whole point of going there is to feel better about myself, you know? I don't want to walk. I want to, you know, it. don't want to have like have a uh, hand job. So I'm like, what do, how do I look like I don't want a hand job? So I take <laughs> off my baseball hat because guys in baseball hats look like they want a hand job. Very suspicious. <laughs> you know what so I mean? So you take yeah. off the cap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not saying David wants a hand job. No, check. I like it. Like he wants so I take that off and I kind of go in jolly, you know? Yeah. Rather Instead than kind of like silk, yeah, like serious cool. looking around, slinking in, yeah, yeah. I need a embarrassed already, massage. shame, yeah. yeah. And she gives me a good back massage. She flips me over. She starts doing a little tickly on the stomach. I'm like, oh, this is like going down a hand job lane, you know. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> out of nowhere, she taps my penis, mm-hmm. and she goes, "You hungry?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh no, I'm, I'm I just." The better ate. question is, is she hungry? She seemed hungry. Okay, got it. I didn't ask her, but you know, this is important for our yeah, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> she looked like famished. Yeah. So I said, someone's no. the meal and someone's the yes. consumer of the meal. Yes, yes. She was drooling. Then <laughs> she tapped my penis again, harder, like four more times. She was like, Ooh. "No, you hungry? Am I breaking your mic?" And I go, "Oh no, thank you, thank you." And she goes, "Oh, girlfriend?" And I go, <laughs> "No." And she goes, "Wife?" And I go, no. I know where this one's heading to. Yeah, and she goes, oh. <laughs> yeah, That's it? She thinks yeah, you're on you're the gay. other team. Yeah. yeah, so I walked out there feeling great. I go to the Tony Robbins thing, <laughs> and they beforehand they did a Zoom call with me, you know, where they go, this is what Tony wants. And he wants me to do Biden on a big screen. No one sees me, they just see Biden. But oh. he's going to introduce me as the president of the United States is here. And I was a little worried because he – that could happen. He could zoom in the present. He's yeah. met all the presents. So I said to them, I'm a little worried they're gonna be disappointed when they see me. And they were just like, This is what Tony wants. This is a cult. You don't tell what this is what we do. <laughs> yeah. So, I did I did the same kind of gig. Bro. You, yeah. I want to hear about I this hear yours, because though. I'm sure yours is better than No, mine. everything is ringing true to me. Okay. So but I love Tony Robbins. Tell yeah. when they play yeah. they play like a videotape before. Yes. So well, it was actually two things. A montage, right? Yeah. I'm making this story way too long, but no, there was like- Not on fly, right? D, no, right? we go DS? forever here. I Googled Tony Robbins' birthday on YouTube. I don't, I don't think I told you this. Research. And he his last birthday was this big extravaganza with all these stars, just like, Tony, you're the best. He's bawling, crying. His wife's like, I love you, honey. It was like his 60th or something <laughs> like that, you know? So I felt even more pressure. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the next birthday. Oh, yeah. So- um, I get there and he's like, thanks for doing this, you little hunk of crap. And he whacks me on the back and everybody's <laughs> super jazzed up, but they've been up since like five in the morning, oh, yeah. you know, swimming with he sharks. Keeps going. And so this is a lot of corporate gigs where they beat them to death and they go, here's your entertainment. They're like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, raw, raw. Yeah, go, yeah. We, we can win. They have yeah. dancers come out. You probably saw this. Mm. After every speaker, they could like, pop, pop, pop. Mine was on Zoom. Mine was on Zoom. Oh, see, that was smart. Well, I was there. I flew down to West 
uh, Palm Beach. He wanted me to fly undisclosed there. location. Yeah. So anyway, so what? What? How does this? Right, what so, happens? Yeah, get to the end of the story. No, you know, so, I want. I, <laughs> no, I, I, I could do Tony <laughs> Robbins for the first half hour. Yeah, and then we'll do McCartney for the second half hour. He's at a trampoline, and I jumped on that beforehand yes. trying to get pumped up. Mm -hmm. And um, so the guy before me was uh, the, the Secretary of Defense, former Secretary of Defense, uh, Larry Sumner's. And he just talked like this. He went over an hour and a half. An economist. Yeah. It's like midnight now. Yeah. And uh, Tony goes, <laughs> are you ready for the surprise of your life? And they're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they're like, have I ever disappointed you? And they're like, no, you would never disappoint us. And then he goes, <laughs> it's all true. And, then, and then someone goes like, blah, blah. There's a pause. He'd forgot to play the package they made, this minute package video of, of him with presidents. Oh, okay. So now that plays. We're like, okay. Mm -hmm. No, he goes, yeah, the President of the United States, they go nuts. Then they play the package. Then he reintroduces me because he introduced me before he did it wrong. But right. now it really feels like, for sure, the President. Because he's in the video, they said he's shaking hands with Obama. And he's yeah. Shaking so Obama. they really think Biden's coming up. Oh, they 100%. Oh, and you're There's coming. no okay. way he would fuck us over yeah. and have some asshole yeah. playing by it. Exactly. Right. So I'm sitting backstage like, oh, no. It's the nightmare I imagine. <laughs> so then I pop up on the screen and you hear this audible, uh, from the audience. And I'm like, hey, it's Tony Baloney's birthday. <laughs> hey, pretty good guy. Come on, man. He's a good guy. <laughs> Corn and pop. I'm dying. Corn pop. <laughs> and it's just death. <laughs> Tony nothing. Bologna. Really? God, I'm that's so unusual. They're nothing from them. Because they're angry. Yeah, and I think they don't even know if it's a joke and they're just staring. And I'm in my head, I'm going, this is my this is the funniest thing. And I've got another. 25 minutes. You know when you <laughs> don't like your, your best bit? bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this is just going to get worse. And are you in a suit and tie just at a regular moment? Oh, like, that's a whole other oh, thing. Okay. I went shopping. You know, you're nervous. You shop oh, for a new Oh, before or after outfit. the masseuse. That's <laughs> <laughs> I had to go after it. You know what I mean? So I bought these new shoes. They were both left feet. So I couldn't even use this. I had, <laughs> I had dirty shoes. What? Who does that? I, I'm making this story... I'm telling you 10%. This is going to be a disaster. bonus uh, podcast, yeah. probably. If you want, yeah, this go to the Patreon. I think it's his own podcast. <laughs> yeah. And then I got a shirt. So I looked, it was a black button and I looked like a magician. Yeah. Um, I th and I made a joke about that. You have clown shoes on and a misfit. <laughs> I, I didn't, I wore my dirty shoes. Oh. And because um, I, I couldn't fit into those two left feet. They go, I like uh, when the magician made all the laughter disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's weird because the screen goes up and now I have to introduce myself. And yeah, here's a surprise for Tony Kyle. Oh, yeah. This is very normal. They're like, this guy's uh, still going? Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, I walk out and they jump up and they're like, yay, because they're oh, all taught yeah. to train give you seals. All, yeah, the energy. And yeah. then back to like, we hate you. Sit back down. This is very normal for <laughs> That's what we hate you. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, I, I said something thing about like I know I look, looks like I'm about to do magic I promise I'm not and they're like we they don't to see magic where's the entertainment but yeah they don't, they don't yeah. get any, any sarcasm or irony no yeah. yeah it's almost like the opposite because it's all about positivity and yeah. then I you know stand up still cutting and I'm halfway through jokes going don't tell the rest of this joke mm -hmm. I, I, I told a joke I go um, I dated this girl she was too young for me she was 19 years younger don't judge I was in college that's when you experiment and they go oh wait that means she was like that three yes. <laughs> oh my god yeah that's a tough and opener I like, no I didn't yeah. that's I didn't a good know. one that's I uh, if that boss you just go into okay. Bill Maher or something yeah. right what's your what's okay, your, your fail safe like <laughs> DEFCON 5 I what bit is just you ever never that situation where you jump to maybe this will yes, work now to your surefires yeah, but nothing's working. In your so. head, you have nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, but you're skipping you're, chunks, and then you're like, I, I don't know. have enough and then now. You're, yeah. yeah. And you're speeding through. Yeah, done it. Half Ugh. this, and then the clock's Sickening. like going backwards, and then like on the piano at one point. And then people, I have like pictures. I'll, I, if you want to, I don't know if you have a website, but I could put up. Uh, anyway. Um, we have nothing. It doesn't matter. We don't really but, good uh, at social media. We barely have audio, I yeah. think. Oh, I, and then I just got Wi Fi. <laughs> anyway, I get off, and I was supposed to sing Happy Birthday to Tony as, as Caitlyn Jenner, right? So there's a wig. I'm back <laughs> on the where the laptop is where I'm projected like a face swap, okay. and I see the wig there. And go for in the my, wig. No, no, I say I can't. I need to walk out of here with something. I can't walk out of here with a woman's wig on, <laughs> so I leave it there and not crush. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I just go sincere. I'm like, hey, guys, it's Tony's birthday. How about a happy birthday? I was supposed to be like, happy birthday to Tony, baby. Yeah. And do some... <laughs> Man, he's got a big old cock. Yeah. But I bailed on that and I just did a sincere happy birthday. And they just turned to their leader and they're like, happy birthday. And I use that to sneak out and I'm grabbing my stuff. And so he thought I was off stage, but I was under the desk. And he goes, Did you guys have a day you'll never forget? And they were like, Yeah. And then he goes, This is a night I'd like to forget. No. He was talking about me. Way. I've ne have you ever heard Tony Robbins say a negative thing oh in your life about anyone? No. And he said about me. That's that's weird. It was rough. Uh, that's weird. That is weird. <laughs> that is weird. Well, we'll, like we'll be right back um, with this show. Well, word from our sponsor. Yeah, it? I was just on a Zoom real quickly, and he was just super enthusiastic, and there were just all these flash scene pictures of people all over the world. Yeah. And he would go, I would do a bit. Like, he didn't like Fauci, so I was like, you don't need a vaccine. It'll solve everything, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. And he goes, give it up for Dana Carvey. So I'm just in my little room. My wife's cooking dinner downstairs. And he's going like this. And it went on for two minutes. So I started dancing in my room and just, ah, just for one landed joke. Yeah. Ah, it was during the pandemic, obviously. How but, much time did you have to do? Um, I think it was supposed to be 45. I think it ended yeah. up being 35. And they were okay. fine with it. Yeah, David, yeah. do you have a Tony Robbins gig story? <laughs> I ha you know, I did get a call about a Tony Robbins gig. Oh. You what? I got a call about one recently. Are you being serious? I yeah. swear to God, yeah. Because I turned them down. I think what happens is you, they do these oh, gigs. Did? Yeah. I was too busy. Go ahead, Dana. You have to throw that. Well, well, Dana, you already did it, though. You were number two. Dana, they no, asked but Dana, then they then wanted they me you, back, in, that, they wanted me back in person. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was really, really busy with something, and they only told me five days before. So I said, you know. There was nothing that was going to stop me to get twenty five thousand dollars. Okay. This was, could have been for. To I would raise like money that money control. now that my four hundred one k is seventy percent down. Yeah, uh, because of. Uh, uh, I I think I know. The Caribbean. Because of DocuSign. Or no. DocuSign, yes. It's the stock yeah. market's been It bad. went down over 100%. What? I actually owe money. It's negative 28%. You have <laughs> no, it's, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, David? You guys are fine. I like when you both do Biden. It's funny talking to each other. Well, I just oh, end man. with Pirates of the Caribbean. I love yours, yeah. your stuff. It's good. I, oh, we, you, have, we have like different Bidens, which is... Which is yeah. The, the latest one, did you do the whisper yell? Because that's what happened yeah, after yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah. I like, yeah, like, come on, man. This guy gets this guy, uh, uh, Vladimir Poontang. No, not not Poontang. The, <laughs> yeah. The guy. The bad dude. And then it's like, yeah, it's like a lower, like a mumble. He does. like. Uh, yeah. But he, my dad used to do this where he'd, he'd patronize Whisper. Like, I know better than you oh, do. Oh, yeah. Because I know a lot better. And I know how to do it. You know, yeah. a, but your Biden's amazing. Yeah, he does. Come on. Yeah, he does that. And way. you do everything. I mean, you just went at him early. Because now the New York Times is attacking Biden. Saying he yeah. makes up stories and bumbling. Back in those days, it was a hot oven, but your thing was yeah, always, always just edgy and funny. And Kyle on it, YouTube is all, and the Instagram is always something that's yeah, ahead of the game. Yeah, you just go anywhere you felt like going. Even when you I, do Caitlyn Jenner, you get, uh, yeah. you get, you always wonder, do these Kardashians even, are they even aware? Or I had, you I never I, know. They fa I found a video that they made, because I did a video where they were like, we're mad at you. The whole thing was just like, we're mad at you. Yeah, <laughs> we're all mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, Chloe did a video going, we're mad at you. And, oh, really? And they did That's it. So they saw it. that one. I don't know if they saw the other ones, though. I think um, yeah. well, maybe just that well, one. Should because... we talk about one that you thought might tweak them? Because um, you're always going for the laugh. You don't seem like you're waving any political party or any point of view other than yeah. what's funny. Yeah, that's yeah. all I, I'm trying to do. You do so Biden, the fresh, yeah. fresh Prince of D.C., right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to finish one up now. They take forever. And I go dark. So, you know, with making money on the, the internet, you've got to keep cranking stuff out. And, you know, sketch, you really yeah. hard to crank out. Yeah. I mean, SNL's, they got 30 writers or something. Yeah. And then. Oh, no, a one man band. Trying, what you're doing? I don't know. When you're doing it excited. in the house and you've got green screens and face swap and all these computer things and you have graphics. And then I edit. And then it's like, like I'll be like, oh, I, I need tape to tape down this wig. So then I go to the store, I got to get the tape for the wig, and that's a half hour. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, wait, I need a tie. Then I go to like the Goodwill, and I get a tie. And then I'll shoot for an hour, and I'm like, oh, my ear was sticking out. I got to reshoot that for God. an hour. Do you some have days anyone I'm helping like, you? So much work. <laughs> I, I know some people who could help you. Well, I, need to find, I need to find a way to get money that I could pay people, because that's – that would be great. Well, you're okay. <laughs> well, it's you Kyle Dunnigan. You got a uh, YouTube channel mm -hmm. well, for listeners. No Go check it out. More talent 
it's tougher to make. There's just some ways it's hard to make money, no matter how good you are. It's just hard to get on YouTube and that shit. It's hard to crank out sketch. Like they do, I mean, SNL's got, there's probably two sketches a week that are Well, they that write good, about 50, you know? 55 yeah. in 24 hours. And two are good, and they take two weeks off every two weeks. Yeah. It's just like it's like yeah. bass player, you know, you well, so, mostly strike uh, out. Sometimes three, Kyle. Oh, is it three? <laughs> no, was, Lauren visited <laughs> yeah. the podcast. We yeah. would do two, and then a week off, and then three, and then a week off, and then around Christmas, two weeks off. And then, but yeah, you're right, a huge staff, churning stuff out, and it's a numbers game. You know? Yeah, so I'll like do a few in a row, and I'll watch it grow, and then I'll stop. I'll need to like take a break for like a month or a couple weeks. And it'll just, I'll drop 40% on my next video. So it's like, that's, I'm trying to figure out how to do the business side. So now this next fresh pressing is more like a short film. I'm going to release it like, and maybe have people pay like so two it's bucks a for it or of something. The Will Smith show. Yeah. And yeah. He's done a bunch is, of those. I know. I've seen yeah, them just for the audience. He's kind of rapping as Biden and, yeah. and, and, and running around, around and then insanity ensues. Yeah. And there's like sitcom I'm laughs the president around fall it. Up the stairs. Yeah. Well, also, per people that are listening should know Kyle is a comedian. He's mm -hmm. been doing it forever. He up for five Emmys, wrote for the, in was it Inside Amy Schumer? Mm -hmm. And won an Emmy for was Girl, it? You Don't Need Makeup, makeup. which I listened to today. Mm -hmm. What was that? Girl, You Don't, don't Need Makeup. Was it on Perfect Amy? Perfect when you wake up. Yeah, it was on the <laughs> Schumer show. My mom has that. I brought her the Emmys. She's very excited. Okay. We'll you come back to Amy mom. Schumer show. Uh, Sarah Silverman, did you write for that show? I did. Actually, that was a show I was writing, and then I had, uh, I was like, I have to get out of here. It was a great job, but I just felt like I was writing too much for other people, and I wanted to you know, perform. Sure. And so I started making, I, I actually, during that writing thing, I figured out how to um, do the face swaps so it was a FaceTime call so they could talk to each other, and that was like right. a big, big um, moment. I just like I was doing imitations of the writers in the room, and they liked it. Then I started doing it online. That's kind of what, what um, year blew was that up. That? How long have you been doing? Uh, two thousand sixteen or sixteen seventeen. And know. so, okay. Well, early on, well, tell us when you you probably were into SNL because all we all were. Yeah. And um, but you did did you finally get an audition? Or was it one or was it you were trying to get an audition? Like uh, everyone? Yeah, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Big fan of SNL. Dana's been a huge influence. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. Uh, but we don't, um, we don't we, I don't want to. Yeah. Well, maybe we can talk about just a little we bit. We can talk a little I mean, bit. I don't, uh, Three sentences. I'll, I'll, I'll comment David, though, because uh, I was an extra on oh, SNL. Right. When I was there? This is the worst. No, story. you had left like the year before. And being, okay. let me just go back. But 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 David. Oh, we're going to dog ear that one. Yeah. Yeah. David. Um, Fucked you. You over. could see in the monitors what was going on in rehearsal. And you could mm -hmm. hear it, and I yeah. was like, "Oh, David's the funniest one," because he, oh. he, he was he was so and yeah. I don't remember what you were doing. Yeah. But he was like, and then he, when an air show came, he would freeze up a little bit. <laughs> 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 he was funny. Yeah, David was the, always the funniest. So one. funny, but like, very fake, very low. But rehearsal <laughs> show you, yeah. I mean, rehearsal. I didn't know back then they were probably taping him, but. You're just bullshitting with your friends saying, by yeah. the way, anything, mm -hmm. forgetting yeah. you're on camera. But when Kyle was there, yeah. we were doing, happened to be one of my favorite ones ever, which was the Gap Girls. Lay off, oh, I'm starving. Lay off, I'm starving. And Kyle, not only was he there, yeah. he was a uh, extra. Ooh. And they put him in the Gap Girls sketch and oh. they put him in a primo spot I was behind super us. I was really so excited you were just on that. camera with no lines throughout the sketch. Yeah, and I'm just right next to Chris Farley. I'm like, this is probably my big break. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's <laughs> not terrible. sure. So but we're yeah. about to go out, and David comes already. He's like, uh, yeah, this is my friend, oh my whoever God, the what says. Uh, my buddy was visiting from Arizona, and I'd never you done guys this are flip ever. Yeah. And I fucking go, <laughs> he can me. he be in this? They go, yeah. And I go, Rick, why don't yeah. you sit here? And they pulled Kyle out. Yeah, well, they, they flipped me. So I go, we'll get you the back of your head, <laughs> Kyle. And uh, my friend will get the... Uh, oh. And then he became famous off that. He he got a deal off that extra work. Can I ask a question about this? So like when sickening. Just for a second, because I don't know that that part of you. Like, when did you start being a comedian? Um, what, you know, trying to be professional. Well, did you go? Was your first stand up at eighteen, or were you doing little shows for your parents when you were ten? Or we have all different. When I was here. younger, I I didn't. 
I, I remember being laughed at, but not like me trying to be funny, but like humiliating things. <laughs> Just in school? Yeah. Yeah. And even my very first memory was my whole family laughing. I mean, my, my grandmother was like, <laughs> first I was like, what's this, Nana? And it was a placemat. We got like a choo-choo place. And she goes, oh, you eat on that. And my little brain was like, eat on it. Didn't make sense, but eat it made sense. Mm-hmm. Like, on I could was like, that. I think I'd skip that little word. Mm-hmm. So I just started eating it, and I came in, I was trying to eat that. And this, my first memory is everyone like, ha ha ha. And then I got to what school. What an idiot. Yeah. And people would laugh at me, but I wasn't trying to be funny. I was little. I think we we're like three little guys, right? Yeah. Three of us were like little what guys. What was your height and weight when you entered high school? Uh, mm-hmm. I know, all I know is the tiniest, except for my friend Michael, was like a half inch. And I love because when they'd line you up, it was yeah. like Michael year on the end. I would, but I was always number two. But I remember they had superlatives where they go, you know, best looking, most likely to succeed. And the popular girls come up to me and they never talked to me. And they were like, we decided you're the funniest. Whoa. Like, what you, great okay. was that? I guess it was high? like eighth grade. Oh, okay. I was like twelve years old. Big so time. before school, you, you know, what I to say to that, lobby. I go, "You hungry?" And they go, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and I go, "You go, it's early. I'm going to ask you again." Like, but I didn't really know or, or think I was funny. And then the lobby of the before you go to school, there's like a lobby, and everyone hangs out there. Oh, it's ter- big, terrifying. Yeah, junior high. Right, right. Yeah. And this big, the big bully Scott Chapman comes up to me, pushes me, and he goes, "You're not funny." Whoa! Because word got out that I was going to be the funniest, and he wanted to be the funny guy. And I was like, "Yeah, okay, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I think you're right." Beat the funny out of yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, "I'm funnier than you." Now everyone starts gathering around us. Like there's going to be <laughs> some funny of fight. A funny, funny fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's an eight miles. So yeah. what does he say? <laughs> I backed it. I was like, you are like, I, <laughs> I totally agree. Over. This is hilarious what you're doing. So then <laughs> I got voted class clown. I got upset about it because um, clown, it kind of hit isn't me. the same. It's not good. Especially yeah. when you're 12 and you want to be liked by girls. And it was yeah. like the popular girls. I was like, oh, they look at me like I'm this like clown. So I have a, my friend was really sweet and he was intending to do something nice, but he went to the principal or whatever and was like Kyle's upset of the clown called the clown so they changed it to best person they changed it to best personality <laughs> really don't shrink yeah, down they, they don't he's it. shrinking down in his well, chair they he's changed in- it uh, did you did it. you uh, did your gift for mimicry emerge at that time? Could you do the PE coach, or were you doing? You know? Yeah, that actually got me attention from girls. I did yeah. um, mm-hmm. uh, Mike. Mm-hmm. I did Michael Jackson. This girl I really liked would be like do Michael Jackson, so I'd just oh, dance God. like a monkey. Then one time she crossed it off her shoe. Michael Jackson. I got hurt personally. Like we broke up, but but did, did wait, you do you, the voice or just do you a would dance? dance? I do the the voice and the dance. I remember this is a hacky impression now, but I saw one of my first impressions. I saw Christopher Walken at our local tiny grocery store, Western Connecticut, tiny little thing. I'd never seen a famous person before, you know, so I was following him around like a creep. (laughs) You know the thing when you go to a grocery store and you're like, oh, I just want to get like some batteries, but then you start going, oh, I need that, I need that. So he had this whole pile of stuff. (laughs) And right before he got to the front, he just like jangled it all over the floor. And he goes, oh no, my cottage cheese. And the lady was like, it's fine. And he's like, no, no. You know, you get quiet and be like, I'm sorry. He got really loud. And that like bug got in my head. I was like, I think um, one of the first impressions I did. But I did impressions. But then I started doing stand up when I got out uh, to try to make money because there just was no money in out sketch. Out of high school? Out of, out of the world of school, out of college and yeah. stuff. And yeah, trying okay, to so early 20s, business. you start doing stand-up. Yeah, and my you know managers were like, don't do impressions and guitar. So <laughs> everything that I do well, they I didn't do <laughs> they, for 20 years yeah, until couldn't. I found Facebook. They told me not to do that either. Yeah. yeah don't a, do impressions. Don't, don't do the church lady. What bad advice oh, that, yeah. that we got. Yeah. Later you go, what the fuck do you know? Yeah, but, it was really, so then what was your, like those years you, you got on... It shows pretty quickly, like Cedric the Entertainer. You were a sketch player. That was one. yeah. That was um. I thought that was like a big break because I was kind of a hit sketch show, and I joined mid season because like we need a white guy to pick on, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> before we would do the show, it was like a funny little thing. They would do a prayer circle, and Cedric, you know, was very religious, and uh, he's holding hands with two Jewish you know producers, and we're just sitting around. I would just stare at the Jewish producers because they'd have to be there like. Pray, please, Jesus, help these <laughs> setups land our punchlines, and we'd be all pr- praying for Jesus. And there was really only like a couple of people who 
believed in Jesus, but that was Those before. Are, awkward. Right are you Jewish? Prayer circles are awkward. are awkward. I'm not religious, no. Okay. Yeah. No. Do you have any um, you affiliation voted? with a political party? Uh, no. How do you spell your last religion? name, Mr. <laughs> Dunnigan? <laughs> uh, wait, I want to get to some impressions too, but also, oh wait, when did you do cruise ships? Because my buddy does cruise ships and he said they're tough. My friend was like, don't do it, it'll be really bad. And I was like, how could that be bad? You know, how could vacation. <laughs> how could that be bad? Mm -hmm. So I go oh, there and- Cruise ships. Uh. Three shows a night. And it's a free show, so everyone goes to the show because it's free, they already paid for mm -hmm. it. And I'm bombing so hard. It's mostly wheelchairs. It was a very old cruise. <laughs> you hear people leaving these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the walkers Please, uh, after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you buy WD forty, and, <laughs> and I got. <laughs> we love when David does. I know he does great. <laughs> he does great sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> WD forty gets beep, underplayed beep. in the world. It's out there though. Yeah, I but I was famous for being terrible on the yeah. ship, so I just hid in my. And room. then you go and you're looking over the Lido deck, and it's like that guy sucked. Are you the yeah. guy that's horrible? So would, yeah, so you bomb the uh, first night. No, I bombed every night. No, nothing. <laughs> three times a night. Three times a night where it was just this awful. And then one time they make you after the show say goodbye to everybody. So you bomb and you got to be like, thank you for coming. Oh. <laughs> A little tangent. Yeah. So I see this woman good game, good hovering game. You know, yeah. around me. And I'm oh. like, oh, here's a fan. That's we'll have to deal with this. <laughs> this is nice. And she goes, I have to tell you, you look exactly like my dead son. My son just died a month ago. They were going to cancel this trip and they really already bought the tickets and the dad won't look at me. There. Apparently I look amazingly and sound like her son who just died. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then I keep running into her because the ship's not that big. <laughs> like at, you know? the, at the so buffet, by the everywhere. pool. <laughs> and, and then I, I went to one bar and I'm like, oh God, there she is again. And she's got her, the rest of her family. And it was like, there he is. And the, everyone's there like, oh there he God. is. And they're like, oh. She so confused you dying on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you both died. She was, that's once amazing. you died on stage, I was like, no, that's <laughs> him. And Very. then she asked me to go rock climbing and trying to be the sun again? Yeah. Wow. I can't say no to her. Oh so now I'm rock climbing and she's staring at me. She starts calling me. you Dave Mama. Michael or something. Yeah. She was sort she was sort of having this thing wow. with me and I, I had had to do it. And I could tell I wasn't it's a good sitcom. <laughs> as good as her son. She was like, just climb up. Like you're not acting. You're, you're good at this. Yeah. So like, she's ordering you around like a mom to a son. Yeah. yeah. Just climb up. Yeah. Yeah. And just and so I'm you do what she's up terrified. <laughs> and her son, I'm sure, was like, "Bing bang." You're the worst yeah. fake son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my. Uh, oh boy. That was the week that Obama was. Uh, Obama. Or not Obama. The that uh, Bin Laden was. Uh, Killed. <laughs> is that Obama? <laughs> that was my Bin Laden. My Obama's not like this. That's, that's what you do. My mom you, points like Obama. You know, not Obama. Obama um, so then, when did you, how did you become a genius? <laughs> are, they, are they two different people? I don't know. <laughs> points like know. like Obama. I meant to say Bin Laden. Oh. There might be something racist in there, but like I kept saying Obama and Bin Laden. But um, yeah, she just. Points like Obama a terrorist lot. is saying their blood will run in the streets. My mother's yeah. finger gets right in you know, their yeah. face like that. Your mom's in mm. your bit sometimes. Yeah, she's really good, actually. Do you tell her what to do or no? Yeah, I actually surprise her because once she knows she's acting, it's over. We have to. <laughs> it's over. Okay. She'll come yeah, yeah. on stage? No, no we oh, film I make stuff videos. At home. Oh, you do a video? And I'll just, your mom? when she's doing dishes, I'll be like, hey, mom, let's, I'll just start doing something. That is. And she has to good. improv it? She, That's and Craig. She's good. Yeah. Craig. Yeah, I do Craig. Which to my is mom. hysterical. Mm -hmm. Craig's hysterical. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we'll talk about You know what's. Go ahead. Sorry, oh, I'm you didn't get to your SNL audition. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Well, yes, we yes, want yes. to get to that. We're just creeping up to like how many years of stand up and, yeah, when, yeah. and then when do you try out for SNL? Oh, yes. And the first time I did stand up actually was in high school. It was 20 minutes before my friends were like, you should do stand up. And I was like, okay, because I just did what people told me. And I wrote a set <laughs> in 20 minutes and the set was 20 minutes. So I don't know what. That must have been very first bad. First time usually crushes. What's that? First time usually crushes. And it's it about did one. pretty good because mm -hmm. I was doing teachers and stuff like that, but I got suspended halfway through it. <laughs> Everything the, could go wrong. wrong. Oh, oh. Well, yeah. it's so it's so funny though. Right? Yeah, but the uh, halfway through, the host, this girl, was like, "Um, you have to, um, uh, you you have to stop uh saying something about oh, you can't say penis or Miss Ola's going to suspend you." Was the thing? 
And then they were all quiet, like, what happened? And I was like, I'm not allowed to say penis anymore. And then I started going, like, Mike killed boss. And then I started doing other names. It was, then they took me off stage. Anyway. <laughs> they took you away. Yeah, they took me away okay. in, in a jacket. Um, but I, like, I started, yeah. But I like when you bump with the microphone with your chin while you're talking and you hug it like this. He's hugging it. He's bumping oh. it. He's playing. So when Let's did you go. start crushing and get the notion, I want to, and I'm highly qualified to be on Saturday Night Live? Uh, I always wanted like, like watching you and stuff. I, not that I felt like I'd be as good as you, but I thought like I can do You're that better. kind of thing. That's like <laughs> up in my wheelhouse. You yes. know? So I really want to do it. And I love the show. You actually almost stopped me from getting, uh, from losing my virginity. You, it I didn't almost... happen, but you almost, I was coming home from a party <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. this woman who was this girl, she's like 21 was in my Spanish class and she's on a balcony and she goes, Kyle Dunnigan, get up here. She was hammered. And like we immediately had, she just decided we were having sex. I don't remember what happened in between. But then I was like, but I, I almost didn't go up because I was like, I want to go back and see Dana Carvey because SNL was starting. And I almost, Ooh. but I, I wish I had because I, I didn't think I got AIDS from this woman. I knew I got AIDS from this woman. Like I, it was back when, if you just had unprotected sex, you got AIDS. Right. It right. right when it started, it's what everyone thought. AIDS. Yeah. yeah. It's everyone's going to get it. So but I you wish I had just. me on the show. I That's... did, and I wish I hadn't. I got was... AIDS from watching Dana once. Yeah, so yeah. So you, either way, you yeah, yeah, can't, can't, can't win. Fauci mm -hmm. got me, took care of me. We give you a shot. You give me a give me a <laughs> <laughs> The boost is. So you do it accurately. I just punt sometimes. Uh, he does a quieter impressions. I just decide how I want him to sound and hope people. He does quieter Fauci. I'm a Dana Curry He's more derivative. You're, no, you're you had us crying, laughing, talking about um, Mickey Rooney. Yep. Um, Mickey you're, Rooney. I I heard you do it before, but I know it's a true story. <laughs> word for word. Yeah. What you worked with him on a play? No, a, a TV show. Uh, one of the boys in 1981. Oh, yes. I was cast out of nowhere. I was just a young stand-up. Fred Silverman, the head of NBC. That's Mickey Rooney's grandson. Then I'm on a 747 with Nathan Lane. He was going. That's right. He was and your so brother. And so we became friends. And then we met Mickey, who had a 38 revolver. And mm -hmm. literally at least once an hour, I was the number one star in the world. You hear me? Bang. The world. But anyway. <laughs> and that, then he, yeah. He's yeah, not kissing he would you. Say, he's like pulling something. Yeah, he would say things like... Uh, he needed money, and he would. I would yeah. just dying laughing. Judy Garland never owned a car. <laughs> it was non sequitur. Yeah, yeah, Why, yeah. Mickey? Because they pumped her so full of drugs they killed her. <laughs> and then he would just look off into space. Yeah, yeah. And they, I asked him for money, and Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis, he'd be there studying you, studying you. He's getting right up in my face. He's about yeah. four foot ten. He's he's going like this right to my face. Joe Lewis, yeah. he's slam, bam, Joe Lewis. <laughs> This fire plug will take you out. He referred to himself as a fire plug. Anyway, that, that's another podcast entirely. But um, when I first met you, it was kind of interesting. I had dinner with you because David's very social and I'm a homebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't really know what you did. I just thought you were funny and a really nice guy. And then I went home and looked you up and went, my God, this is my brother from another mother. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's an honor you know, that you think that. That's, that's well, awesome. it's the evidence is on YouTube. <laughs> Watch it. It's like extraordinary acidy stuff. The Stallone doing the way you do Stallone now, as oh, a, yeah. it's like a character as well. There's a sweetness to him, kind of. Yeah, it's you know? different than he. He's it's, actually seen it, which is funny. We've had Frank Stallone on the show. Oh, really? And it's really cool to because some people like impressions, some people don't like. And what? Did, why did you find that Stallone? That particular Stallone. You uh, just started doing it, and then you yeah, know. just you know, it's like really like the punchy started on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's just sniffing, really yeah. stupid. He's like confident, yeah, yeah, confident, but stupid. super sincere, confident oh, yeah. stupidity, confident yeah. stupidity. You know, I just did like a, I don't do. A, he like makes little movies, and the last one, which got demonetized, everything gets demonetized that I put out. But he's like doing a documentary on nine eleven, but it oh, was yeah. like. The day we got 9 11. Yeah, that's it. The first building got 9 11. What about this? Kyle and I joke about like if he goes on dates or, you know, we're obviously both older in our twilight years. Mature. Back nine. You're mature. Let and when we're out, I remember I was with uh, said Rick, our friend, 
all my friends are my age. So if we were in, we were in Las Vegas and mm -hmm. we sat at this booth and this girl came, she was our hostess. So they like to blab and then the uh, like manager sends her, go talk to those guys. So yeah. she just sits with us, but no, no one invites her. She just sits there, she's 21. She's like, hey guys, so <laughs> beer in Vegas. I'm like, yeah, that's a safe bet. And then, uh, and then she doesn't have much to say. And so she goes, where are you staying? We're like, oh, at the Mirage. And she goes, oh, fun. That's the one that's got a big fountain. You know, she doesn't know anything. And yeah. then my buddy goes, you know, I was there when they built the Mirage. I was there opening night. She's like, huh? I go, Rick, quit advertising how fucking old we are. Like, built the Mirage. She doesn't even know that it was ever built. She goes, what? And he goes, yeah. And I go, oh, yeah. And we were at, uh, we were, she, he goes, remember the dunes before they blew it up? I go, Rick. Oh. You're, it's getting worse. I go. The monkeys like, were yeah. better than the people. Uh -huh. Yeah, he goes. Ah, I go. We were at Joey Bishop's 40th at the Dunes. Were you there? No, I'm 21 years old, and that was 200 years ago. And 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 I, we just got to be careful because you've said it before. You slip and say something like, uh, "I've got buddies who are like, yeah. uh, you know, do you use compression socks?" And she's like, "Huh." Yeah. And I'm like, why are you talking about the oldest things in the world? <laughs> I even feel old. I go, you don't wear that. And he goes, yeah. And then my other friend's like, uh, when I, if I have like soreness and she goes, I know my arm hurt yesterday. And he's like, oh, do you think it's arthritis? I go, what? It's, like, what? it's not arthritis. She's 21. And quit saying the oldest sickeningest words that even I'm at your table going, beat it, old man. Yeah, he's not good for you. No, what's, it's just what's a young lot of people. What's young right shtick, though? What would you say to no, a peer you just, younger? No, like, I, I love, I love Beyonce. <laughs> no, there's no conversation. Yeah. It's just yeah. she was doing her job to say hi. But this happens a lot when fans or, some, or just anyone comes up and says hi, and then we just catch ourselves having... It's just too old. You're right. Just re references. The old vibe. It is hard. I, the, my last date that I had, I don't go on many dates because of what happens in on them. And she <laughs> says to me, um, well, you're a little long in the tooth. <laughs> and I don't think we were talking about age or anything. And I thought we had a, yeah, and never heard from Yes, that's how it started. We were talking about that. Long in the they... tooth. Long in the tooth. Long in the tooth. That's that makes her seem old that's an old-fashioned that is maybe old. she was 62 <laughs> with a nice with lift long. yeah i went yeah my uh, dating's not but i went on a date where the uh girl was um she showed up different than what her picture was just say that very different just say different yeah mm -hmm. different. and she gets in the car and um she gets nauseous and every five minutes we're pulling over for her to drool out of the car and then she takes off her shoe and starts rubbing her <laughs> bare foot like crossed over. <laughs> anyway, it's been going well. So anyway, about SNL. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I want to answer one. I knew a guy who went on a Tinder date with this woman, and uh, she'd never, she was, I guess she's didn't have a lot of money, but they took her to her sushi restaurant, and she just kept saying, I want to stab it. I want to stab it. So she had, she had a fork. She was just yeah. stabbing the sushi. What do you mean, just a little piece of sushi? Yeah, I want to stab it. I'll tell you one last story of when the, my waiter, who's German, I got, I was, there was a picture of me kissing a girl in a pool that was secretly taken or whatever, but it was kind of all over the place because it just yeah. was a weird match of people, me and her. Actually, it was just weird because she was cute and I'm gross. <laughs> that was her friend. That's really the headline. Mm -hmm. And so my waiter goes, <laughs> Not hey. to Daily Mail. So it's been definitely very weird. You know, like I obviously am aware of it and it's weird. And then about a week later, the guy goes, hey, he knows me. Yeah. How was your uh, vacation, huh? I go, okay. And he goes, ah, a little pool party, huh? I go, <laughs> yeah. He goes, ah, a little fun in the sun, huh? <laughs> I go, yeah. Keep going? And he goes, yeah. yeah. I saw uh, pictures of you kissing a girl. I, yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. He goes, oh, why, why do they make you so fat in that? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you get out of the pool. It's like, I didn't know you were kind of fat, yeah. but why do you want that picture? I go, I don't want that. What are you we talking about? I go, that's what a paparazzi is. They take a hundred yeah. pictures of you and find the grossest one. And then they go, they got a jeweler's loop and they go, he looks fat and gross here. We got a winner. Yeah. Run with it. And then someone runs into the press room. But he goes, no, I wouldn't pick. The he doesn't get it. Yeah. He goes, no, I wouldn't pick that one because, you know, you look kind of fat and you, well, you want to look idea. good. I go, why aren't you listening? You don't understand what I'm saying. He goes, no. We need to get these. <laughs> we need to get a lot of people out of your life. No, that guy, he's all right. Let's put on Speedos. Everyone just makes 
Go to the beach. I'm an easy promenade target. around, the and beach. then run to a, run to the web and see if Daily Mail. Mm-hmm. All right, SNL audition. That's all. SNL audition. Okay. At this so, yeah, point, yeah. let's just say you're a seasoned stand up, and you probably do pretty much any accent and at least fifty. Have you done Amy Schumer's show yet? At this precious. point, you've done any of that stuff? Writing? No, I had done Cedric, which was a sketch show, but I never mm-hmm. worked on any. There was no reason to really work on any uh, impressions or characters because I wasn't doing it on YouTube and mm-hmm. there was no money in doing it. Mm-hmm. Right. I was doing stand up and doing. It's just yeah, shame. and you do just straight stand up. Yeah, just doing straight stand up. Extremely funny as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I um, always Look feel up, like kids. square peg into doing stand up. Like I'm trying to do scenes and stand up. That was the same with me. Yeah, I was always. Yeah. I didn't realize that till later. Mm-hmm. No wonder it was difficult in a honky tonk bar. Mm-hmm. Show us your dick. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, I am a yeah. French waiter, <laughs> and now I'm trying to. Yeah. Fall, you know, so. Yeah. I, so what I did was I just made a random tape of impressions and sent it in, not even thinking, because I SNL. nothing was going yeah. on. And I was broke. And somehow they were like, flew me out and decided that I would audition. And it wow. felt like way too big suddenly. It was like the next day I was flying out and I'm trying to write the thing and I'm really, really nervous. And I'm in a hotel for two days just running it. And you got like, here's my six minutes or whatever. I'm trying to get it correctly on time, which is the wrong, you know, yeah. mind, I'm like, I know I'm in the wrong mind frame. And I get there and it's, it was 30 of us. It was Nick. 30? Yes, 30 people. Nick Kroll was there. Okay. And he was talking about that. Yeah. And he was with John Mullaney, who looked really young. I was like, hey, how old? How old? I'm like, Do I know you? He's like, no, I'm five. I'm this many. So I was like, this guy's not going to make it. That's, I've never heard of John Mullaney. Let me yeah. let me in, in, absorb that. Yeah. In a I'm five. He, he, he made jokes about how young. He does, he looked, and he looked real, really young. Crazy for the long high school. So senior. he's auditioning yeah. too. So you got he's, he's auditioning. Isn't this really the good same people. night as or day as yeah. Nick Kroll? Nick Kroll. Okay, and, thirty uh, people. Thirty. Thirty so people. Many. That's a death march. And I'm just like white knuckling, and I'm just like, please not first. I just want to go first. Yeah. You know, let someone else. So you can hear. Figure can this you out. hear? Uh, n- no. Was this in eight yeah. H? I think people could actually. I. No, we were in the Conan studio because they were oh, doing the Olympics. A. Yeah, six four Rockefeller Center. Mm-hmm. Got you. But they're like, first up is Kyle Dunnigan. Uh, and I was like, out of thirty? Yeah, I know. That's what are the odds of that? Three percent odds? Three point three percent odds? So I went into the. You can do this. Hey, you got you, this. You got this, buddy. Right. But um, I'm having trouble. He didn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Spoiler. So they're miking me up which is nerve wracking in himself when someone's micing you. And the camera guy's like, I'm going to count you in three, two, one. You're right. I'm writing getting your nervous. Stuff. This is so yeah. well told. Crew guys have too much power the to mic ruin thing it. and all the, the okay, mic. kid. Yeah. Is that good for you? Do you like it right now? And they're not nervous at all. And where do you want your radio pack? You want it right in your pocket? Yeah, yeah. It's all these questions you don't want to think about. Yeah. So he goes, I'm going to count you right in your stuff. Three, two, one. You'll write in your stuff. So he said to me, my stuff. So I had that locked in my head. So I walk out, and the camera's in front of me, and Lauren and everybody are to the left, and I'm just staring at the camera. <laughs> oh, no. Sick. Any applause at all? No, just silence. Nothing's happening. You just walk out. <laughs> Nothing's dead. happening. Nothing's okay. happening. And then Lauren goes, you, hello? Like, hello? Say hello to us. We're over here. And I go, oh, hello. Hi. Hi. And I turn back to the camera, and more dead silence. And he's the guy's not counting me in, you know? And then Lauren says something. <laughs> I'm already on thin ice, and that's just crushed me through the ice into the water. He goes, "Are you okay?" <laughs> Whoa! And then I start trying to say, tell him the guy. I go, "Well, he said three, two. He knows he's about to get tattled on, so he counts me in when the <laughs> red light goes on, and I'm just <sighs> uh, destroyed. Uh, uh, I I can't get to any facility or impression." My brain's like, look, all hands on deck <laughs> to make this guy pass out. Drop the Bill Maher. <laughs> We're not doing any of that. We're just oh gonna God. breathe, you know, Caitlin or you know, whatever. She wasn't alive. She wasn't alive. She wasn't anyway. Um, <laughs> that made no sense. So I can't even. They brought a piano out for me. I can't play the piano. Like the I'm just plunking fuck is on wrong it. With you? And every impression sounds the same. I'm like, this is Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen. This is blah blah. And I'm sort of outside myself. And then I walk out like I just got beat up. 
and then the producers go to everybody else. Guys, when you go out there, say hi to Lauren, okay? Oh. And so everyone after uh, me so was how not like, to do hi. it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And be fine. Uh, it's fine. How many were out fine. there? There's Lauren, was like 10 people? There's probably 10 people. And they yeah. were sort of to your left and the camera mm-hmm. was center? Yeah, I didn't know, so where, didn't know where it played. Yeah, I didn't know where yeah. it, I don't know if it was good to them or the camera, but the camera guy, it seemed like that was the thing to do. Yeah. But uh, what, what was your Bill Maher there? Okay, people. <laughs> Do you think you're one of those people? Who's well, let's, I don't let's know hear Bill Maher. Yeah, Go keep on. going. I, mean, I love it. And no one, does anyone else do him? I don't think. Uh, you're, to me, your hook was the okay. Okay, people. Yeah. Yeah, and, people, and, and whiny, okay. whiny, whiny, whiny. You think you're Do you this really and that. think you don't? You're wrong. Church lady, do you think there's a magic man in the sky? There's not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it. okay. <laughs> it's sustaining the okay. Yeah. Yeah. Eve was a pig. She was made out of ribs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he admonishes his audience yeah. so directly. You think this and you think that. Yeah. yeah it's Everything just... sounds sarcastic. You think you're good. I bet even if he was trying to be sincere. I'm there we go. S- yeah, I'm sort of like that where people think I'm not I'm sincere. I'm like him ordering percent. frozen yogurt. Yeah. I'll have the rum raisin because it's delicious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the go gurt. What I'll impressions did you do go. on SNL audition? Yeah. The attempted. I... You had... I did Chris Hansen was big at the time. You How know, does he the guy go? Can like, you do him now? You're not nervous uh, now. Yeah, he was the guy from To Catch a Predator. Oh, like, yeah. He's, he's trying amazing. to have sex with little girls. His screen <laughs> name was, yep, you guessed it, Boner95. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to have sex. He does like nine notes in the one word sex. Yeah. He goes, sex. <laughs> yeah, he's girls. so lascivious. Yeah. He's, he's got a new show on yeah. I was watching. It's just everything is so cryptic. Mm-hmm. And it's come yeah. out he's kind of a criminal, sort of, really? which is interesting. Just, plot yes. just quietly. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And he's, what was your one that never failed that you couldn't get to that day with Lauren watching? Oh, I, none of them sounded like any of them. Oh, you really couldn't get in the voice from nerves. I, yeah. yeah, I was so um, shell shocked. It's almost like if you're afraid of bees and there's bees around you, I, I couldn't even begin to get to uh, what I. My voice. It's really so inefficient, that, this thing. Because I, Steve Carell, when he auditioned for the show I did in 96. Was, yeah. You know, yeah, that was great. He came in and he was really nervous. Yeah. You know, and he wasn't really doing well. But I, I was such a horrible auditioner that later I looked at his tape. Mm-hmm. And of course, Louis and Smigel loved him too. But it was like, oh no, he was just nervous. Didn't yeah. mean a thing to me. It would be yeah. almost you know. better if you put it on tape and sent it in because then you just do it on your own time, your own speed. You get it the best it is. I know. I, I think so. And and I hear that they do try to rattle you. Uh, I know yes. Nick was saying that they, they, so maybe they do, but they, uh, Lauren, if you're listening, you don't have to. Everyone's really nervous. You're really already really nervous. And I get it's a live show. You better be able to handle it. Mm-hmm. And there's an argument for that. Like I wasn't ready to do that. You know, show. it's funny when I don't yeah. remember this, but Louis uh, C.K. when he auditioned, I think he auditioned where we did a maybe Catch Rising Star, one of those places, mm-hmm. stand up comedy club, where me and Robbie uh, Schneider did. And and when I was on the other side of it, it mm-hmm. was like, oh, there's auditions tonight. If anybody wants to go, like Marcy would say, you guys. And so Downey, so a bunch of us went down because I was still a writer also and performer. Early nineties had no yeah. pull, but. I don't know if it was Lauren, but it was maybe that first one is everybody else. Maybe it's Lauren, but you know, it's still scary. Smigel, Downey, Frank, and you know, all, all of us. And then mm-hmm. a bunch of scattered writers and producers. And then um, Louis said he was going on and we were walking in when they introduced him. And he said, uh, I, I shushed everyone to be quiet so he could start. Oh. I don't remember that, but it sounds about right that you would go, I just did this two years ago. Mm-hmm. And I know how sick he is backstage going, oh no, I got to mm-hmm. go on. And then... And then they're like, you're up. They're like, well, they're not here yet. And then they go, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. And they go, oh, they're coming in. They're and coming you're like, in. Uh, wait, that's exactly like a horrible situation. What do you do? Do you not start? Your best jokes are at the top. No one's listening. Yeah. Everyone's like, I'll get a vodka soda. Do you guys have uh, potato skins? You know, you're like, yeah. no, no, just listen right now. That's the only part you need to hear. Mm-hmm. And then we can do whatever. At one point, Lauren did stop me. I, I got to be seen in a comedy club, but I also did the thing you did. With like yeah. eight people there, is is that all you've got, or is there is this, or are you gonna, is that pretty much what he said? Yeah, but I, I <laughs> thought later it was to see if I would blink, mm. you know. But I, I yeah. had a rough childhood. I know yours was a peaches and cream. It really was. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had so I had a lot of anger in me that I would mm-hmm. translate into competitiveness, like sometimes, That's like good. I had a little bit of. 
Like, okay. I saw that audition that you're talking about. Yeah. It's online somewhere, and you were really funny. I remember that, and I remember thinking, wow, he's re that's really tough. You were you were like, um, I remember there was like a microphone, like, oh, penis. Oh. You started doing Robin Williams. Robin Williams. <coughs> oh, look, penis. Oh, always, oh, oh, penis. Oh, penis. <laughs> oh, look. Yeah, really that was funny. an easy one to do. Yeah. I, always, I felt like I kind of bombed. I felt very nervous. But, you know, part of stand-up and show business is hiding nerves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just that's it. Well, because I think his argument is, well, when it's live to the world, right. we don't need you freezing up. I, 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 I think that's a legit thing for him to it's do. It's sort of true. I, mean, I just think that if you, if the government mandated that that you would, you would do Saturday Night Live, you would, you would have flourished because you you de get desensitized. It just takes time. There's all yeah. There's yeah. also once you have a job, some people and I think I'm like the ones have a job. I I relax. It's more like they trying to get the job. Or yeah, because it's yeah. just there's Lauren. This is thing. And I came on. There was just the original cast, and then there's the Billy Crystal, Eddie Murphy years. So there was the legacy was only. 10 years old so people coming in now it's yeah. like 45 years of comedians and pitchers yeah, yeah here's what you gotta compete with yeah you know i think you saved the show because thank you for I, I that. love you thank Kyle. no i mean you. i really if you think about <laughs> that show was dead thank i mean no you thank elevated you. it you thank saved you. it again you're the funniest a guy time. i you kind of run the air <laughs> I, it's at the baton, the, uh, but I was like, here, Adam, <laughs> here, Chris, you no, David. Yeah. I can't even argue that Dana was so good on there. I, I mean, want to. Also, that time, I don't remember anyone talking about it. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. was in the cast. In 85, going, yeah. yeah. We, did you right overlap with him? No, I was right after that purge year. Weird cast. Where Madonna did the cold opening, my first show, saying that last year was just a dream. It never happened. Oh, so is were, that what yeah. she did? Yeah, because oh. it was like, yeah, going to... Iron Man for your laughs. He's great, but it, like. But uh, I was nervous Robert as hell, and I had shitty shows, and you know it was yeah. just you do get used to it. But it, it there is an aggression to it. It's a mm. rock and roll show. It's it's like aggressive. It was scary being uh being an extra, and they're like counting down, and all the extras get nervous. I thought I'd really made it or something, and they sent all the extras into the um, Donahue room, and they're like, "You stay in here. Donahue, Phil you Donahue, don't yeah. look at the cast in the eye." Yep. We're gonna come in here every twenty minutes and beat you with a stick, and, this, and you could feel like, oh, we're. I remember when Kyle came right up to me and he said, "Hey, you accidentally switched me in the booth <laughs> during Gap Girls, yeah. and can you just go ahead and fix yeah. that because it's harder for me to be on camera." Mm -hmm. Actually, you were in the one of my favorite Gap Girls ever sketches I ever did. I know it's funny. I have a memory of being there. It's unreal, and that was. Pretty so you were there as David's friend. You were friends the, at that point. No, I didn't know him. Or didn't know. Him. I was in the booth with him. Yeah. No, um, you were in the booth. Not with us, but you were in the booth right on I was camera. With your, with your friend. Oh, with, with my with your buddy. Friend. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, yeah we just flip-flopped sides to the back of my head. I'm sure he iced you once and he was on camera. He oh, said yeah. once Farley sat down, though, his acting mm -hmm. career was 100 percent over. <laughs> because it was funny, funny, then yeah. Farley shifted or something and he just it was like an eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> it was over. <laughs> he, Arnold said that about Danny DeVito. You never get Danny, never have him sit down because he loses the energy. You got to keep Danny on his feet. Keep him on his <laughs> feet. You know, you got to pump him up. Yeah. Oh, you, you must do Arnold, of course. Who a little can't bit. you do? Who do you want to do? Who are your favorites? I can't you do. do you guys. Did you do anything on Amy Hi, Schumer? No, you do my voice. Hi, I'm, I'm, I have a blank voice. I'm, Hi, I'm, I'm Dana Kirk. He has we're a born. voice. He has a. Yeah, he has he kind has of a something. cool. He has like a throwaway thing that I I start to do and I don't think about it. Mm. Doing him throw away a thing. Can you get to his good... timber though? Because he has kind of a. This is David Spade, everybody. Yeah. Mm. He has kind of a timber kind that's of like... a lower register. It's more of a laziness. It's uh, more of a laziness. Because my jaw uh, always hurts. Jaws, my neck, so I don't move my mouth. Yeah, that hurts you down my jaw. Hey, me. ladies, no, what's it's up, girls? Just sexy. It's just There's just only sexy. one word to describe it. It's, um, it's, 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 it's when you were on Amy Schumer, you were a writer, and did you? We'll get you out of here soon. Yeah. What's Amy Schumer? Was it a? Was it fun to be a writer on that? Was it a good? You wrote some good sketches. It was pretty much a heyday for her show right it was yeah. a big big show big show yeah it was a really good schedule too because we come in and have like really basic pitches like this is a guy who owns a hamburger shop but he's <laughs> afraid of hamburgers or whatever that'd be your whole pitch you bring in five. <laughs> and then they go okay right ham scared hamburger guy and this other sketch 
and we'd go home for three days and we'd send it in on Thursday. Oh, really? And then on Friday we'd get notes and then we'd fix it. So it's like we lived lives. Oh, you didn't just sit smart, there because then we had I think soak we and sweat stuff. and fear like we did. Mm -hmm. So you got trained to be a sketch writer on that show. They hired uh, you from your stand up, or how did or yeah, you just Yeah, she just in? hired me from stand up. So there was no crazy audition with Amy no, there going. No, no. <laughs> did you worm your you way on? Don't audition me. I don't know if you've heard what happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What are you talking about? I we want to trend. We want to. We never trend. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, she's funny, man. We say? would love you to be on the show, Amy. Yeah, did you get on the show? Did you do anything on the show? Yeah, originally it was it was uh yeah, I was uh yeah, I was on a few um things. Okay, could you have a softer answer? Um and then um I was, uh, what about stuff? Stuff? He goes, I was NPR, uh, uh weird ones. Hi, I was on the show. We'll be one right time back. Right what was the highlight so far then cuz you I, when did you just fucking destroy at a club or so, or a gig that you went, okay? Cuz I've seen some uh, I think you were at Toronto Comedy Festival or Montreal, and you're destroying just stand up. And you I, saw me there? No, I saw it on YouTube. Oh, oh. I mean, it was kind of destruction. I I oh, remember really? it. Being, Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, stand up. I have was, you ever destroyed? Or are you not remembering this? Dana said I just destroyed. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you must have destroyed because I look at the talent yeah. and then I think of the number of times right. on stage. I mean, what are the odds? <laughs> <You're thinking laughs> yeah. He's, He's got to. Uh, you no, but, killed a couple years ago somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to follow you. If we go out on a little no, fun night, mm -hmm. David likes to hit the clubs yeah, and hit hit the it. girls. Yeah, no. And then after that was Kyle Dunnigan. And now Dana Farfo, the living museum piece. That's what I feel. <laughs> He's your... still alive. Let's bring him out. No, you oh, do. Wow. The longer you stay around, you become a museum piece. I followed Seinfeld yeah. the other day. Can I get a picture, dude? <laughs> Seinfeld goes, I'm going to go do some new stuff. I go, all right. And I'm like, oh, this is great news. Maybe he'll bomb, you know. Because You're going to follow Jerry Seinfeld? It was just at the improv. He just came yeah. up and he goes... I'm going to do a set. You want to go on or you want me to go on? I go, why don't you go and then you can get out of here. And uh, We shot the shit for a little bit. He was going to try some stuff. And then when I followed him, I go, um, I think that stuff's working. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's done. He fixed it. It's, yeah. It's not really amateur hour. He's, I, no one works harder than Yeah, him. he's too good. Or Louis as well. But just as far as just writing. Just oh, writing I know. and writing. Yeah. yeah. I, I I did the comedy cellar and it was it was Jerry Seinfeld went up then Robin Williams, and then Chris Rock and then I was next. This is well that would be a tough after spot. Robin died before <laughs> when was this? It was just after he died. That's a tough spot. <laughs> it was oh. a tough spot. Oh, 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 oh look! Oh, oh look at this! Oh, Kyle Dunnigan! Oh, 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 the leprechaun man! All right, my oh, last story. We represent the lollipop girl. No, Robin was. Oh, the fly. I was doing uh, I said, the, the improv, yes. and the uh, they said, uh, you know, I hosted it a lot when I was in the beginning, mm -hmm. before SNL and all that, just to get on stage. I mean, of course, they go, Bud would say, huh, oh, David, why don't you, uh, <laughs> Bud do you want to stay out of the yeah. halls? Don't stand in the halls. And he goes, do you want to host one night? It's not about the money, it's the honor. And I was like, all right, mm -hmm. do I get a pineapple chicken dinner at least? Because I'd have to eat there because I have no money. Yeah. So I was... Now and then they'd have a showcase night, so they had me do seven minutes for Star Search or you know whoever, and I'm standing there waiting, and, and uh, it's a good crowd, it's packed, and I'm next, and the guy's finishing up. He got the light, and then behind me I hear her, <laughs> touch her. shoulder, David's face, yeah. and I go, oh hey Robin, I don't know Robin really well at all. I met him through Bobcat, mm -hmm. and I go, oh hey, and then it hit me. You're not fucking gonna go on, right? mm -hmm. you know. And he goes, "I'm just gonna jump on real quick." I go, "Of course." And then he went on, did 45, mm -hmm. and he annihilated, raped, and pillaged. And then, and while oh. I, I was like a salmon because he walked off, and the whole crowd left with him, and I was trying to get to <laughs> Follow the stage him into the street, yeah, <laughs> like the Pied Piper. Yeah, oh, I was right. like, "Excuse me, pardon me," like Bugs Bunny. And yeah. I finally get the stage. There's about 18 people out uh, of uh, the whole club, and I and all it. the people I went to see me left. They're like, "Ah, oh, it's not gonna get any better than that." I had one run-in with Bud where I was the comic strip in New York and I was eating Chinese food and he goes, hey, can I have uh, a little bit of that? And I go, no. And he goes, what? I don't know who you are, but you'll never work in LA. And who I thought that? he was joking. I thought he was joking back. And he may have been joking. I still don't know this day. But you, you, Who was talking to Bud you? Bud Friedman. Friedman. He runs he was all in the New improvs. York? Yeah, oh, he's oh, a comic okay. strip. 
Oh. Yeah, I thought we were going to take it joking, outside. I, I did them really on SNL. It. Didn't take do very outside. well. Take it outside. Take it take outside. And the monocle, it kind of bombed. But <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> just for the fans listening, Robin Williams, I got to know him really well the last five, ten years of his life because he moved oh. up to Marin where I was raising my kids. Uh-huh. Played a little local theater. Yeah, this shyest, sweetest. The, the dichotomy yeah. between the powerhouse on stage and to me it's like Elvis charisma because mm-hmm. he was so introverted, so shy, and so well, deferential. Well, called everyone boss. Okay, boss. All right, boss. boss. All right. And then he would go on stage, and he had such likability. And to me, he was like a Shakespearean actor coming on stage as if he had nothing. So he, he created this whole, because right. he was always saying, oh, did I take anything from you? He was always making amends. And I said, no, mm-hmm. I, I tried to be you. Mm-hmm. I stole your whole act. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, right. he yeah, walks on a, like he's got nothing, and then he's, even the improv, it's a Rolodex of like, if I think of this, I do have a joke about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. If you say yeah. this. And his commitment, oh, yeah. you know, he'd pick up a little plastic thing. Oh, flying mm-hmm. saucer. You know, <laughs> there was just one time, I think it was Albert Brooks that says that, Robin, it's okay. Because you know? <laughs> when Robin would get on, he couldn't stop himself. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, enough with, enough about Kyle. Let's, um, yeah, Kyle, let's start, thank you let's for start coming the on. podcast. I'm warmed up. Yeah. Kyle did a great job. And uh, Kyle's a guy you got to check out on YouTube. Kyle's done again. Okay. Compliment alert. Good. Yeah. If you like comedy, you yeah. got to go on Kyle Dun- Dunnigan YouTube channel. Kyle Is Dunnigan dot com or dot com. Or, yeah, that's Kyle dot com. Kyle Dunnigan dot com. I wear your merch hoodie, and I've sold a couple. Since oh, really? That. There's a plethora. Good. I love it. And what is your latest favorite voice? Is it Biden? Because he's uh, so current now? Or? Yeah, Alec Biden. Also, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, that's a oh, really yeah. interesting take. Can we have Dude, a little bit of, uh, little bit of a, to, to finish off today, our imp- little little impression cavalcade. Mm. Hey, hey, Alec Baldwin, how you doing? I'm doing well. We're thinking of finishing Rust, but I haven't pulled the trigger yet. My wife, <laughs> Ilaria. Look at that. She was born in España in a little town known as Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> well, what does Elon what does Musk kid? think of this? Wait, what's hey, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty cool, you know. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm, <laughs> Rush is probably going to be a pretty, pretty cool movie. You know, so, you know. Wait, Impressionist jukebox. Doesn't, Bob, doesn't Alec Baldwin's wife have another little baby named Ilaria? They're all called Ilaria. <laughs> they all I have 19 children. But it's not an H, it's an I, it's Ilaria. It's Ilaria, and there's Lilaria, and there's Hilaria. Hilaria. <laughs> Hilaria. Okay. He did an a Instagram where he went off on, I love my children. Sure, I'd like to be playing poker with the guys sometimes, or going to a film, or seeing an opera, or <laughs> playing golf. Or, and he listed for 20 minutes. He goes, <laughs> hundred things children. you'd rather do. <laughs> What's your Trump? What do, you, what do you do with Trump? So terrific. My Trump, it's the best Trump. <laughs> it's got to be the most fantastical Trump. <laughs> it's really not, but it's like silly. It's like a exaggerated. I, mm-hmm. I did him before, um, before he, he was ran. present yeah. stuff, um, but it never got better. There's people who do it. Um, that guy on SNL does it really, really He's, well. Yeah. His is, yeah. yeah. I do trans Trump. Trans Trump. Trans Trump. What is that? What is that like? Don't so ask. Tra- it's the same. <laughs> yeah, don't ask. Oh, okay. Trans Trump. Okay. It's just he's it. trying to get elected for the next 2024. Mm-hmm. Look, we'll just end there. Listen, thank no, you so I, much. Wait, wait, wait. Com. I was going to do Trump, Trump applying ch- chapstick. We're going to put it on. We're going to put a lot of on. Let me tell you, the lips are going to get soft. You're going to love them like you wouldn't believe. He's cherry. Cherry grape. on top. All different flavors. Uh, I like the hand. Ray Liotta, the late, flavors, great, brilliant late Ray Liotta. Ray. How do you do Ray Liotta? Chantix. Fucking um, Chantix. You know, it was that Chantix commercial. I did a thing where he's oh. like, uh, <laughs> How about the ch- well, smoke? Yeah, try fucking Chantix. Why would you want to quit smoking? Why would you do that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Why would you want to quit smoking? How, See, it works. Chantix. How would uh, Sylvester Stallone sum up? Oh, I, I hate when people do this to me. Oh, my God, yeah. Sum up the podcast, Stallone. You first, I like the beginning when everyone said Kyle was funny. Then the beginning <laughs> got a little weird when <laughs> Kyle was talking. And then the end was nice when people said Kyle was funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a good summary. <laughs> All right, everyone Kyle, grab a protein again, bar on the way out. Enjoy Thank it. you, Kyle. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank I you, appreciate Kyle. it. Thank you. Bye, guys. Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? We want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. Who's the next question from, Dana? 
Um, let's see here. It's Samantha Washburn. Samantha Washburn. Hmm. I like she goes, here's my dumb question. Funny already. Yeah, she's playing along with how we do it. Uh, do you try to hang out, talk with certain friends before performing or appearing on something to get you in a funny mood? Or do you just spring out of bed every morning and start cracking yourself up with your own jokes? Are there, this just keeps going. Are there people in your life that bring out your funniest version of you? Who? Rack them. I love it. That's a reference for people don't know was almost going to be the title of this podcast. It was David's idea. And it's based on when in pool, when you're a great pool shark, you say rack them. Yeah, you, you hit yeah. the last one in and you go rack them. You get all the, you know. Like you just nailed it. All the billiard balls going. So if you nail a joke, you go rack So em. that's funny. She didn't use it in the perfect sense, but I like that she used it. Because she started with, here's my dumb question, and it was Rackham. In yeah. between, not so good. No, it was very good, Samantha. <laughs> she gets it all. Okay, but Sam, these, Sam, Sam, Sam Washburn. So, Dana, this is a good question. Now, I will say, I do try to surround myself with funny people. Even, uh, I don't say even females, but if I date someone, I like when they're light on their feet or just laughers or fun. Nothing too serious or heavy because yes. there's enough of that in the world. So Dana makes me laugh. We're having dinner tonight beep, and it beep. makes me laugh. Yeah, time. we are. Are you going to come late? <laughs> <laughs> is that me? Yeah. Oh, you're so funny because you're the only one that goes to dinner earlier than me, which is shocking. I know. You like to get a big steak and fries and then lay down to go to sleep at night. I like to be kind of empty. I can't sleep. I can't eat and go to sleep. And no, I, go to, I, I have farmer's hours. I poo in my car on the way home. I Jeez, you're in sharing. My car. I thought that was a private thing you wanted to tell me, and now it's beamed out. Of I like when I get a little gross, and Dana goes, "Oh boy." Okay, so let's get back to this. Who? Does, what, you, Dana's wife is very funny, and she's exactly that. She's light well, on her feet. She has an incredible sense of humor. Yeah. That she's a human laugh machine, but it's real. Um, so it's yeah, good, it puts good me in a good mood when I go to Dana's and she's there. She laughs. She's mm -hmm. funny. She adds funny things, and she just gets all the whole thing. And uh, she just, just like talking to other comedians. And mm -hmm. I do like being around people like that. I don't wake up cracking up, but sometimes I do laugh. By yourself? Yeah. What do you, yeah? Isn't it embarrassing? That's healthy. But there's two things here. There's one is before performing. I don't think the only thing that gets me turned on <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. when I go out to an audience and I get a big laugh and then I'm immediately it's into fun, the yeah. mode of being funny. In life though, hanging out with you or Lovitz or Dennis Miller or any of our rowdy friends, yeah. uh, they a funny person starts making you laugh and then you kind of bounce back. So that's right. Some people just draw, drop your energy. They don't have to be hilarious, but some people are just almost the opposite. Like for some reason you walk away feeling woozy or you just feel like in a bad mood or you're kind of down and that's just chemistry thing um so yeah anyway long story short rack them this has been a podcast presentation of cadence 13 please listen then rate review and follow all episodes available now for free wherever you get your podcast no joke folks Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 